we've mentioned with our redox reactions, it's going to be helpful to write them as half reactions, an oxidation half reaction and a reduction half reaction. This is going to be important to be able to do because we're going to need to do it to balance our redox reaction equations. In this example, we have zinc solid and copper ion reacting to make zinc ion and copper solid. The zinc is going from zero in its neutral form to plus two, which means it's losing two electrons. In order to get that plus two charge, two negatively charged electrons must be lost. That step is oxidation because loss of electrons is oxidation. You can also look at the oxidation numbers. It's going from zero to plus two, becoming more positive. So it's an oxidation step. The other half reaction is with the copper. Copper is going from plus two to zero. So that's going to be a reduction half reaction. It's gaining electrons to become neutral. It starts out as a plus two charge and then gains minus two from two electrons to make zero charge in this elemental form. We need to write our half reaction equations. With our oxidation half reaction equation, we're going to write our identities the way they are in our original equation. We have our zinc solid on our left, and we have our zinc two plus on the right, just like they were in our original equation. We just need to figure out where the electrons go. In our oxidation half reaction, we're losing two electrons. They go on the right side because they're being produced. Again, you can think of it as making sure that charge on both sides of the equation equals each other. We've got zero for the zinc solid, so the right side must also equal zero. The way it does that is by having two electrons to balance out the plus two of the zinc. With our reduction half reaction equation, we have copper two plus, and that is going to gain two electrons be to become the copper solid. The two electrons are on the left side to show they're reacting with the copper two plus. They're being added to it. Again, we've got a plus two and a minus two that will add up to zero, and that will be the same as the zero on the right side from the copper solid. The oxidation half reaction is always going to have the electrons on the right. The reduction half reaction is always going to have the electrons on the left. You can remember it that way if you wish, but for me it's easiest just to remember to make sure the charges on both sides equal each other. We split our reaction into half reaction equations. Now we're going to add them back together again. As we add them back together again, anything on the left side of an arrow in a half reaction equation gets brought down on the left side of an arrow in the overall equation. Anything on the right side of an arrow in a half reaction equation is brought down on the right side of the arrow in the overall equation. If something appears on both sides, we can cross it off. Since we have one equation where two electrons appear on the left side of the arrow and one equation where two electrons appear on the right side of the arrow, we would end up with two electrons on each side of our arrow in the overall reaction and they would cancel each other out. After crossing off the two electrons on each side, we just bring everything down into our overall equation. We've got copper two plus aqueous and the zinc solid on the left sides of arrows, so we bring those down. On the right sides of our arrows, we've got zinc two plus aqueous and copper solid, so we bring those down. We end up with basically the same equation we started with. Don't worry, there's a point to all this. For redox reactions, not only does the mass have to balance, but the charge also has to balance. We're going to have to balance the masses just like we've done in the past. If we've got one chromium on the left, we need to have one chromium on the right. But we also have to make sure the charges on each side of the equation equal each other. In this equation, we have chromium solid reacting with nickel two plus ions to make chromium three plus and nickel solid. When we look at this equation, the masses are balanced. We have one chromium going to one chromium. We've got one nickel going to one nickel, but the charges are not balanced. 
On the left side of the equation, we have a total of plus 2. On the right side of the equation, we have a total of plus 3. This is not a balanced redox equation yet. To balance redox reactions for neutral solutions, we're going to have three steps. Our first step is to split the reaction into an oxidation half reaction equation and a reduction half reaction equation. Each of these half reaction equations must have the masses and the charges balanced. In this example, we're going to focus on the chromium in the oxidation half reaction. Chromium is going from chromium solid on the left to chromium 3 plus on the right. We're just writing it the same way as it was in our original equation. Then we have to put in the electrons to make the charge balance. If we have a plus 3 on the chromium ion, we need 3 minus 1s from electrons in order to make it equal 0, just like the neutral solid on the left. We have chromium solid going to chromium 3 plus, plus 3 electrons. Three electrons are being lost from the neutral chromium to make it the chromium 3 plus ion. For the reduction half reaction equation, nickel 2 plus is gaining two electrons to become the nickel solid. So again, we're writing it the same way as it is in our original equation. The nickel 2 plus is on the left and the nickel solid is on the right. We just fill in the electrons where they need to go. In this case, they need to go on the left to balance out the plus two on the nickel ion. We have zero overall charge on the left and zero overall charge on the right. We've written our reduction half reaction equation. Now the number of electrons lost by chromium is going to have to equal the number of electrons gained by the nickel. Remember, these reactions are not happening by themselves. They're happening together. And the loss of electrons by one enables the gain of electrons by the other and vice versa. That number of electrons has to be the same in both half reactions. But right now, it's not. Step two is going to be balancing the electrons. If the number of electrons are not the same in both half reaction equations, we're going to multiply each half reaction by the number of electrons from the other half reaction equation. That will get the number of electrons to be the same in both half reaction equations. Since we have two electrons in our nickel equation, we're going to multiply our chromium equation by two. Since we have three electrons in our chromium equation, we're going to multiply our nickel reaction by three. When we multiply our reactions by some number, we're multiplying all of the coefficients by that number. For our oxidation half reaction equation, we have two times one equals two chromium solids, two times one equals two chromium three plus, and two times three equals six electrons in that half reaction equation. For our reduction half reaction, we have three times one equals three nickel two plus, 3 times 2 equals 6 electrons, and 3 times 1 equals 3 nickel solids. Then we can add our half reactions back together again, and the electrons will end up canceling out. Our 6 electrons get crossed off, and we just bring down everything else on the correct sides of the arrows. We have three nickel two plus and two chromium solids on the left. On the right side, we have two chromium three pluses and three nickel solids. Now the equation is balanced in terms of both mass and charge. Balance the following equation in neutral solution using the half reaction method. Cr3 plus reacts with Cl minus to make Cl2 and CR. Is the answer A, which has coefficients of 1, 2, 1, and 3, B, which has coefficients of 1, 3, 1, and 1, C, which has coefficients of 1, 2, 1, and 1, or D, which has coefficients of 2, 6, 3, and 2? The 
The correct answer is D. You should definitely follow your steps of splitting it up into half reactions, multiplying those half reactions by some value, and then putting the equation back together again. But if you look at the answer choices, you can rule out all the choices except for D. For A, remember we need our masses and our charges to balance. One of the things that's wrong with A is the charges don't balance. We've got a plus three from the chromium and two minus ones from the chlorine, and that makes it a total of plus one on our left, which is not balanced with the zero on the right. For B, our charges are okay. We've got a total of zero on the left, balancing out our zero on the right. But the masses don't balance. We have three chlorines on the left and two chlorines on the right. Those don't balance in terms of mass. For C, the number of fluorines is okay. The number of chromiums is okay. So the masses are fine, but the charges are not. Plus three and two minus ones makes a total of plus one on our left and again, zero on our right. D is the only one where the masses and the charges balance. We've got two chromiums on the left, two chromiums on the right, six chlorines on the left, six chlorines on the right, a total of zero charge on the left, and a total of zero charge on the right.